Stop laughing, stop it. Just your screen. Just my screen. Okay. So let me walk you through my presentation then um, and move on with my presentation. All right. How's everybody in London? We're <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> still alive. Oh, right. so it sounds a lot better than we do here, right here in the Netherlands. So sounds very good. Um, I awfully miss you all because, you know, I'm a regular attendee of Drupal Camp. Um, and it's a shame I can't be there because my company issued a travel ban. So I hope you have an excellent, great day. I'm going to walk you through a presentation about UX equity. All right, um, UX equity. Um, this is me, Michel Vendelli. I am the CEO and founder of One Shoe. Um, I am a brand strategist, uh, also board member of the Drupal Association board member of the Dutch Lara Vella Foundation and board member of the Economic Board Utrecht. Um, so I'm very proud that uh, you all can uh, join my presentation today. Um, UX equity, what is it all about and how did my journey uh, with regards to UX equity start? Um, well, it started about a year ago when my son came up to me and he says, Dad, um, I want to change the facts. And I looked at him a bit bewildered and I said, well, son, you only have a bank account for just well, less than a year. Um, why is it you want to change the bank so quickly? Um, he said, well, he says, um, the bank I'm currently having, SNS Bank, does not have an easy to use application. I says, okay, so you want to bank through your mobile telephone? He says, yes, and I've done my research. You know, I've done my research on user experience. I looked at again, bewildered, because he was talking about user experience. And I'm like, okay, so what did you find out? He says, well, I've done my research, you know, at all the Dutch banks. I looked at ING, I looked at Avian and Road Bank, and Rainbow Bank, and I've chosen ING because they have the best user experience with regards to an application. So, well, that's very interesting. He says, yes, and they have Apple Pay, they have everything incorporated. Um, and yeah, and because I have the best user experience of all the apps, I want in yeah, banks. So I thought that was really interesting. You know, and I said, okay, so you want to change banks um, because of the user experience, and that means when you think of it, um, user experience make people choose a brand, and it will earn them a greater volume and even greater margins. So because. Um, and normally, when you think about brands, you know, you choose a brand because you like it, because you feel attached to it. But this time, it was user experience. People were drawn to ING Bank because of user experience. So, let me talk about the importance of UX design. Um, a good user experience means better business. Um, the way customers experience your digital product or service on a daily basis determines how they will feel about your brand or organization. So it's all more important that interaction with your brand has to run as smoothly as possible. A good user experience goes far deeper than creating things that do what they are supposed to do. This is an important lesson for programmers, for developers, but also for marketeers. So a good user experience goes deeper than creating things that do what they are supposed to do. So let me give you an example, and I probably assume you've ever encountered it, the ketchup bottle. The ketchup bottle is uh, famous, the, the Heinz ketchup bottle, the glass bottle. You know, there were commercials in the past where people tried to reach out to ketchup because it was a glass bottle and the user experience was a bottle. You know, it was not working properly. So, by the looks of it, they changed the etiquette. You know, they changed the way you could hold your bottle in, in a way so you could pour it perfectly. But this was not the way it worked. Um, so what they did, they changed the complete design of the bottle. Everybody probably knows these ketchup bottles. 
Um, and by changing the model from a user experience perspective, by turning the top end around, so you can basically stand it upside down, um, and by changing the new opening, suddenly customers were able to squeeze the bottle and even let the last bit of ketchup out on their, I don't know, hot dog or, or spaghetti or whatever. Um, if I ask you um, how many more bottles were sold in the UK after they introduced these ketchup bottles, you probably think, well, maybe I don't know, a, a few percent. No, it was eight times more bottles of tomato ketchup, ice tomato ketchup, were sold because of a change in user experience. Okay, so how does this all relate to the brand and brand equity versus UX equity? Okay, so let's have a look at brand equity. The official marketing science definition of brand equity is the set of associations and behavior on the part of a brand's customer, channel members, and parent corporations that permitted the brand to earn greater volume or greater margins than it could without the brand name. This is written by Luther Zerg in 1988 in the book The New Strategic Brand Management. It's a book um, uh, written by J.N. Kepler. If you want a really great book, please rent this book or buy this book online. It's, it's a great book um, for all of you to read. Um, so this is focusing on the brand. Um, and for example, if you walk into a regular store and you buy a white pair of socks, you pay one pound or one euro. Um, but if there's a Nike logo on it, you probably are willing to pay 16 euros. So the brand strategically affects the customer and the customer is willing to pay more and therefore the brand is, uh, permits it to earn greater volume for greater margins. So, I was thinking, you know, with, you know, the whole story of my son in my, in my background, in my, in the head of my back, in the back of my head, um, I thought, okay, let's have a look at UX equity versus brand equity. So a better user experience leads to brand loyalty, better conversion, and therefore greater margins. But, the definition of a Lutheran who research brands ties greater margins to brand associations and customer behavior. Never is the word user experience mentioned. So I kept wondering whether UX equity could be a new definition that lives side by side with brand equity. So you, the UX equity definition I would like to introduce is UX equity is the combination of unique, unique user experience designs and behavior modeling data on all clients' touch points, which permits the brand to earn greater volume, greater margins, and or improve user satisfaction compared to what it would without this design. So this is a new definition I would like to introduce. This is basically the first time I'm speaking about it. Um, so uh, yeah, you have, uh, well, how do you say this? Uh, 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 well, the first, um, I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on this later after this presentation. Okay, so let's do a deep dive on this. So research by Forrester uh, shows that when compared to their peers, the top 10 companies leading in customer experience outperformed the standard of board index with more than triple the returns. So this also shows that investing in UX leads to higher returns. And in 2016, in the 2016 survey, the future of design, it was reported that companies with the highest investments in UX, referred to as design unicorns, saw their sales increase by 75%. Companies that had invested less in user experience design saw their sales increase by 60%. A 15% difference. That is a lot of money. So there's a lot of um, sales. Uh, increase a lot of money to be made by investing in UX. So I came to the question, okay, so, so when, when I talk to clients, you know, they'll ask me, okay, you know, uh, yes, we would like to invest in UX, um, but, but how or, 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 or 
how can I calculate the return on investment? So, so the question is, why is it important to calculate the value of UX? Well, UX designers ensure a synergy between business objectives on the one hand and user needs. The question is, which KPIs should UX focus on to increase the business value of the company? Um, and there are seven KPIs, I'm going to talk about that later. Um, and the question is, how do you calculate UX equity? So I came up with a new calculation, which I'm going to share with you later on. But it, right here, it is in this presentation. So there are several ways we can choose to measure UX equity. Um, it's the outputs or improvements divided by the organizational investments, hours or dollars or pounds or euros, depending on where you're from, um, equals the client reward, client reward, uh, reward divided by the client's price paid. Or an easier way is it to calculate it in a way that the investments in UX design minus the extra gross margin um, EBITDA equals UX equity. So this makes it really valuable for salespersons or project managers to justify the amount of time and money to be spent on UX and design. We know it will um, give you a high return on the investment. So let's have a look at seven most important UX KPIs. So all of them you can use to calculate the value of UX. One is increased sales, sales and returns, um, increased involvement, increased acceptance, increased user retention, save time, increased brand loyalty, and reduce development time. So let, let, let us walk through all of these seven KPIs. Um, increased sales. Charlie Claxton, he was head of UX design at the world's largest e-course platform, Amazon. He teaches us that every dollar invested in UX yields between two and a hundred dollars. So the amount of money that's being spent on Amazon to improve it, you know, has led them also to greater um, return on investments. So a study published by Forrester Research in 2016 stated that while a great UI, user interface, could increase the conversion rate of a website by 200%, but a great user experience could increase the same by almost 400%. And just to be aware, uh, a user interface is not the total um, a set of UX. UX is bigger than only a great user interface. So, in many, many projects that we worked on, increasing sales was the most important goal. The checkout uh, or order, that plays an important role by this. By correlating UX adjustments with the increased checkout, order or amount, and we can measure the return on investment. So let's have a look at the second one, increased involvement. Um, we know that a great user experience has a big effect on the satisfaction of your customers so much that it increases their willingness to pay by 14.4%, reduces their reluctance to change brands by 50.8%, and increases their chance of recommending a product by 16.6%. Um, I know this. Um, and I've seen the effects, which were even, even sometimes even higher than the 40.4%. Uh, we currently work for Stage Entertainment. They organize uh, musicals throughout the world, like uh, The Lion King and Anastasia. Um, and we have been improving their user experience over the last uh, one and a half years. Um, and we saw an increase of over 30% willingness to pay. Um, and, and, and we uh, looked at every single detail of their website um, uh, and are now even looking at their uh, uh, events and shows on, on how to increase the total user experience on all touch points. So, so yeah, this is uh, increased involvement. Yeah, they're definitely willing to pay a lot 
more money. Okay, so increased acceptance. A well-developed UX design will increase acceptance. User will, uh, uh, will more easily embrace the product or service, which increases their use. Uh, I think the iPhone has been a great example of this. Um, usability testing can be performed by UX designer in test labs. We do that a lot. Um, and the results can be presented to management. So if you go into a, a UX lab, a test lab, um, you can see the outcome, you can do A-B testing, um, and you will, uh, it will definitely improve uh, uh, increased acceptance of the product. Um, uh, funny story though about the, the iPhone. Uh, everybody, uh, I was in a presentation a while ago with one of the designers of the, the first iPhone, um, and we asked him, okay, how big was your test lab? He says, well, it's not really that big, there was only one person testing it, and it was Steve Jobs. So, so he did a great job uh, uh, testing it for all of us because you know uh, we all know the success of the uh, the iPhone and the acceptance of a new inter interface like the iPhone introduced. Um, increased user retention when a potential customer visits your site, you only have a few seconds to convince them that they are in the right place. Um, Investment in UX optimization is necessary to quickly gain trust and ensure brand recognition and user retention. So lowering the bounce rate um, is a KPI that UX designers can focus on during the design process and that managers can steer, uh, steer towards. Um, we have been working for the last five years for DHL Parcel. Um, we uh, currently uh, run uh, all of their websites in Analux, um, and the, um, with an improved user experience uh, uh, on their website, we lowered the bounce rate by over 30%. Um, and the amount of uh, revenue that generated was uh, very much substantial that they chose, and that they asked us to, um, uh, to help with redesigning all of their applications and, uh, and their total digital landscape. So, so we're still currently working uh, on, uh, on that really, really cool project. Um, number five, that's saving time. Um, Mozilla, for example, after spending about 14 weeks on improving the user friendliness through uh, an interactive design, Mozilla saw a 70% reduction in the number of calls to be call center. So there's a lot of time to save and therefore money. Um, this is one of the, the business cases we used at DHL Express. Um, the, their call center, uh, there's, there's over 100 people working at their call center, um, and I challenged them. So if we increase the um, uh, improve the user experience of your website, um, let's see if we can lower the amount of uh, people, uh, lower amount of calls you know, being generated uh, by the website. Um, we lowered the amount of calls by 10%. Um, and uh, if you uh, uh, have been working in a call center before or, or know that industry, an average call costs between six and eight pounds. So if you lower the amount of calls coming into a call center by 10%, you can easily make that calculation. Um, SAP optimized its UX and reduced the required training time by 30 to 80 percent. That's a staggering number. Um, so improving UX saves time and provides immediate profit as well. Um, let's have a look at number six: um, the um, increased brand loyalty. So by providing a hassle-free user experience, um, organizations can positively influence customer satisfaction and increase their confidence in the products, the system, and thus brand loyalty. Um, a great UX therefore leads to uh, um, uh, brand loyalty, higher brand awareness, quality, and brand associations. Um, so no fewer than 80% of online consumers are less likely to return to a website after a bad experience. So, if you come up with a standardized website which is very bad in UX, um, and you lose that online customers, no fewer than 88% of online customers are likely to return. 
student, but right after bad experience. So that's according to the Gomez report why web performance uh, why web performance matters. So it is vital for us within the Drupal community uh, to provide websites that have a not a great uh, user experience from a backend perspective or uh, are, are really efficiently coded. No, they need a great user experience as well. Um, what in the third will tell others about their disappointing experience? So when they go to the pub or anything, you know, so I've been to this website, and, and so you have a lot of negative marketing coming from a bad experience. So so that that's, that's quite a lot. So well-designed software increases the chance that users will easily solve their problems, making them repeat users, um, and also bringing uh, others along. This also this also filters uh, uh, onto your brand reputation. Um, the future of design survey uh, in startups shows that uh, the more a company invests in and focus on design, the higher the customer retention um, and involvement. So this is a really important KPI to look at um, when you start designing a website. Any questions so far? No, no, we're good. No, no questions. Excellent. Okay, let's go to number seven. Um, reduce development time. And this is interesting for all you developers out there or uh, leaders who run development teams. Roger Pressman tells us in his book, Software Engineering, that for every dollar spent to solve a problem during product design, $10 is spent on the same problem during development. And 100 dollars or more if the problem needs to be resolved after the product or service is being launched. That's a lot. That's a lot. So a consistently thought out UX design that has been tested in advance in a test lab reduces the number of hours of development needed to achieve a result. Without UX design or without UX testing, developing as programming, the majority of cases involve rework. And this means that the project must be rescheduled, code must be rewritten and tested, and the site or app must be put live again. So this can therefore be prevented by testing well in advance. So if you tell this to a client, you know, okay, why should I invest in UX? Before we start development, you just tell what Roger Pressman just told us. One model and to solve a problem during product design equals ten dollars spent on the same problem during development and one hundred dollars or more if the problem needs to be resolved after the product or service is being launched. It's their call. So this makes it really easy to calculate benefits of a great UX. How do you calculate it? Okay, so how do you calculate UX activity from a project management slash development perspective? Okay, Dr. Susan Wanchek stated in her white paper usability of 2005 that up to 50% of a programmer's time is spent on avoidable reprogramming. You know, and, and if you want a disgruntled programmer, here you have it. They don't like reprogramming. This can be prevented by giving development and programmers clearer insight in what they are building. The calculation of cost saving is done via this calculation. So you have the number of errors times the average repair time times staff costs, staff the number of employees required equals cost saving. Or Number of changes times the average development time per change times of cost the number of employees required equals cost saving or time gain times staff cost times number of employees is cost saving. So this is a way to calculate uh, the value of UX from a development perspective. 
I will share this later on, um, uh, so you don't have to write it down. Uh, I'll share this later on this uh, this presentation. Um, so uh, it will give you a chance when you talk to a client or when you're working on a project, uh, when you are uh, uh, running a project and you have to tell uh, your superiors like, okay, I want to invest in a UX. Um, uh, how can you calculate it? Well, these are several ways to calculate it. Um, and uh, you can uh, uh, basically uh, uh, well, tell them the necessity of investing in a great UX. Okay, so, so let's have a look at UX and Drupal. Um, UX equity shows that working fully decoupled has many advantages as it gives you the chance to design, develop, and deliver the ultimate user experience. The benefits are clearly stated in this presentation. Um, and, you know, when I talk to my UX designers and designers and, and our front-end developers, developers, they say, like, hey, we want to create this great user experience, but the standardized Drupal is limiting us from a UX perspective. So therefore, um, we suggest our clients, you know, and our developers are willing so, um, that the um, that the fully decoupled version um, of your website will lead to a better user experience. So this is um, an argument to choose for fully decoupled versus traditional. And yes, I fully understand uh, there are always arguments of costs involved, total cost of ownership of a project. We have these discussions with our clients as well. Um, and then I always ask, okay, let's see if we can create a business case uh, around investing in UX or uh, investing in a fully decoupled solution um, where Drupal is the contemplation platform, um, but we create the front end with, for example, Vue or React. Um, it all comes down to what the, the end user wants um, uh, and end user needs. So um, this is one way to have that discussion. Um, and therefore, I want to make a, a, a statement. Um, I'm, I'm nearly ending the end of the, this presentation. Um, I am going to ask every single agency leader in this room um, to contribute to Drupal. As an agency leader and board member, I am contributing a lot to Drupal in many ways. Um, uh, many of you know me, uh, have seen me at Drupal camps, uh, giving presentations about why Drupal, uh, Drupal needs marketing, uh, how to improve uh, your organization, um, I've been investing quite a bit in organizing events. Um, uh, um, we also contribute in code, um, but also in design and by organizing and sponsoring events. Um, there is one thing that is really important um, on the roadmap for Drupal, and that is that we have to improve the user experience of Drupal. Um, and there's a project currently going underway, it's called Claro, it's a new Drupal backend experience. Um, and the Drupal community is currently looking for designers and front-end developers to work on Claro uh, so we can um, uh, launch it. Unfortunately, not coming at Drupal 9, the, the timeline limits us uh, to launch in the Drupal 9, but I would like to make a push for it to uh, have Claro, it is already in Drupal 8, but I mean a stable version, I would like to see a stable version in Drupal 9.1 because that will improve the user experience of the backend a lot. So therefore, I'm calling out to all agency leaders to make some time and invest in Claro. This will help your business, this will help our clients, um, and it will improve the experience of Drupal for end users. 
So the benefits of a great user experience should be clear after this presentation. So going back, um, I walk you through um, the importance of UX and design. Um, I showed you catchables. I've showed you uh, ways of to calculate UX. And this is all comes down to um, UX equity uh, as a new um, uh, definition. And uh, well, you have the honor to be uh, hearing uh, uh, for the first time this new definition. I'm going to launch a website which is called uxequity.com. Um, in which I will explain a lot about UX equity uh, and how you calculate it. Um, so going back to the definition, UX equity is the combination of a unique, a, a unique user experience designs and behavior modeling data on all clients' touch points which permits the brand to earn greater volume, greater margins and or improve user satisfaction compared to what it would without this design. The interesting bit is is that Drupal, you know, because um, um, because its family, its API possibilities are endless, it is perfect to uh, create a, 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 a headless version. I think Drupal is in the right spot and in the right way um, uh, to uh, deliver a great end user experience. All we need is Clara and then full. Um, and this is where I want to end my presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any so, questions so far? Anyone got questions for Michelle? Walia, you, you have a question. Why does Why uh, does WordPress beat Drupal? in this space. Why does WordPress beat Drupal in this space, Michelle? Yeah, and how um, well, this is me. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is an interesting one. Um, I'm going to share this with you on a personal note, not as a board member of the Drupal Association. Um, I always have to state this because I have several hats on. I am the, the, uh, the CEO of Vanshu, a, a digital agency, um, and um, I've been looking at the Drupal community. I'm, I'm actively in the Drupal community for over 14 years now. Um, the first thing is, is that the Drupal community, um, I'm, I'm Dutch, so I'm going to be a bit blunt, so, so don't, don't <laughs> give up on me too much. Um, the Drupal community is developer focused on all levels. Um, I, personally, I'm not a developer. As I said, I'm a brand strategist, um, and I think it was about five weeks ago that I decided, like, okay, let's try, let's see if I can install a Drupal website. Because when you look at the, um, uh, the brand mission of WordPress, it's actually written in their brand mission that you can get a, uh, a WordPress website up and running within five minutes. So here I am, as a non-coder, says, okay, let's see if I can get a Drupal website up and running within five minutes. Um, I deep dived into Drupal.org, which was for me a nightmare, because it was very difficult. Um, and I started reading about how to install Drupal. I was talking about, I was reading about the Composer and all that kind of stuff. I had no idea what I was talking about. This was not written from a user, uh, friendly user perspective. When you look at the backend of Drupal, um, WordPress from day one has been focusing on creating a very user friendly end user experience. They could do so because they had investors behind them. A commercial company, Automatic, and investors. And I don't know if you know it, but Salesforce has been investing $300 million into Automatic to improve WordPress. Therefore, within the, 10, uh, the top 10,000 websites, they own 35% market share 
fair versus, I think about 9% of Google. So they have the biggest market share. Um, the Drupal community has never focused on user experience. Um, it is great for developers, far more greater than Drupal. I'm sorry, than WordPress. Um, but um, it's not as uh, safe or uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, Drupal. It is far more safer than, uh, than WordPress, but it has not invested in UX. Therefore, I think we need to make a change as a Drupal community to start thinking like an organization, not as a community. Where do we want to see Drupal go? Do we want to see Drupal competing with WordPress or competing with Adobe and Sitecore? Which market position do we need and what is our end user? We're, we're thinking inside out. We developers love this, so we're going to build it. Let's think, this is from a UX perspective, outside in. What is it our end users truly, truly want? This is a mind shift we have to make as a group of community. And I state this on my personal behalf. Well, as a bold man. And that's the reason why WordPress from day one has invested in it and beats us on that block. Not from a coding perspective, not from a security perspective, and not from an API perspective. Under the hood, Drupal is far, far more better. And I would suggest Drupal 10 times over WordPress, but from a user experience, uh, WordPress is beating us. Does that answer your question, Olio? Yes, it does. Thank you. Yes. Thanks, Michelle. All right. Any more questions? Um, I love the slides, Michelle. Um, where can we get hold of a copy? Because I think there's lots of great information there to share with people in our companies. Yeah. Um, the, the website will be up and running somewhere next week um, uh, due to a little virus that's spreading around Europe. I was not in time to launch it before this presentation. Unfortunately, I was about to launch it yesterday. Oh, is that what you were trying to launch, reading the instructions on Drupal.org? <laughs> Next week, um, so, so uh, all, all the information which you will see, uh, which you've seen in this presentation, will be on there, and um, I'm probably going to uh, put this presentation on SlideShare as well. Great. And we'll share it through the, uh, the Drupal Camp channels. Thank you so much for doing that in these hard times. I think we all would have preferred to have you here, um, uh, but uh, I guess we'll find someone else to buy us beers tonight then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Michelle. Take care. All right. Thank you very much.